Hey guys, today I'll talk about how to beat the Necrons. They have been a menace in a few tournaments recently, so I'm gonna share my tips on how to deal with them and two of their best detachments. So without further ado, let's dive right in. This is going to be mostly for Space Marines and Custodes, but for other factions as well, because the advice are pretty much the same. So they are a hybrid semi-elite army. It means they have quite a lot of models in general, but they're still not a horde army, so there is going to be a relative concentration of force in each unit. They have a reanimation protocols rule, which in and simply said every unit reanimates d3 wounds every turn if there is a wounded model he just regains d3 wounds and all of their models including their sedans and vehicles everything they have the reanimation rule if there are no wounded models left in the unit or if there is a wounded model but there's some wounds do carry over from the d3 year old and you reanimate a model which means that you can set it up on the battlefield within coherency of that unit which gives you extra potential mobility because you can then set up this model closer to for example your future target of a charge they are relatively slow base moves so they move five on their necron warriors and most of their basic infantry units but there are outliers from that like wraith with the 10 inch move the score pack, i think they have an eight inch move and so on relatively slow army their durability is generally speaking b plus level so they are reasonably durable they are no longer the reanimation menace they were just when the 10th edition started it's probably a good thing because dealing with a 20 man unit of warriors back then was almost unaccomplishable for most factions they still do have good specs especially in one of the detachments we're going to talk about and today we're going to talk about two of the best detachments they currently have in my opinion and these stats tournaments that support that which is hypercrypt and canoptic court so hypercrypt is the one that offers them mobility which is what they as you can see are slightly or partially lacking which is especially good for big bricks of units like the necron warriors or our c-tans which have only six inch move but gained a lot of durability when the codex was released and i highly recommend to watch my how to beat necron c-tans video because there i talk in detail on how to actually deal with them and what is going to be your strategy a lot of necron players are now shifting away from the c-tans but still a lot of them are using them because it's a very durable and efficient unit so do check that out canoptic court offers instead a well-rounded set of buffs it reminds me a lot of the gladius in that sense but only for canoptic units thankfully there are quite a lot of good canoptic units that necrons players have and want to use so we get extra efficiency for melee shooting there for the mobility as well and the defense as always if you're looking for help building your roster or your collection check out the links to my patreon in the description because i provide personal assistance for that there so let's look up close at these two detachments which is exactly what you will probably encounter in your local gaming clubs and tournaments if you participate but you should be ready for these two the hypercrypt legion is essentially gray knights version of necrons where they get almost all mobility shenanigans you can think of the only one that they don't really have is the reactive move which is something that the canoptic court has about that a bit later one thing that gray knights as an army lack is a shooting they don't really have good shooting the best they have is uh, the dread knights which they are okay in shooting not not really something world ending so even though they are capable of jumping around and shooting at people they cannot really do that and gradually grind the opponent's army to pieces Necrons do have that shooting so it's what your hypercrypt legion opponent is probably going to be doing they're going to be probably staying away from you most of the time and only engaging you in melee with the units that you actually don't want to be fighting with like the satans and the shooting unit will be just jumping around trying to stay away from your charges and potentially your shooting as well. Ekron's shooting is going to be mostly concentrated around the heavy destroyers which are extremely good against vehicles. Also doomsday arcs are probably going to be used there because again they are nice decently durable tanks with good shooting. Warrior blobs are also quite efficient for their price and especially with the full rerolls enhancement that you get in this detachment which if you teleport with a warrior blob you get full rerolls to hit. And considering the combo of using the chronomancer with the warriors where you get a five inch move after the warriors shoot so you can teleport them for example behind the building sorry in front of the building and then shoot and come back through the wall essentially into the building protecting them from further shooting in your turn so necrons do have shooting for days 
few things to be aware of for you. First one is very important. It's 1 CP Cosmic Precision, which is the Necrons version of deep striking within 3 inches of your opponent. Your counter to that should be just ringing the objective with your unit in order to prevent your opponent from actually deep striking their assets right onto that objective and stealing it away from you. There is no real reason or necessity to screen for the three inch dip strike other than the objectives because you will not be able to do that most likely you'll just waste your time your energy and your opponent will probably still find a gap somewhere to do that so i am always very uh entertained by seeing that when the opponents have worried about three inch dip strike three inch dip strike is not that scary because you still will have a whole turn to react to that because i cannot charge so i'm gonna stay with where I am most likely unless I am Grey Knights where I can then reactively move but that's another story Hypercrypt don't have that so don't worry about the three inch dip strike other than protecting the objectives you're on from them being stolen with that dip strike. Monolith is going to be most likely present in the list of Hypercrypt you see because two oh, sorry three or four stratagems there are pretty much dedicated to this model. First one is Monolith gaining four plus invulnerable save which is a great help for this very high toughness model it's toughness 13 now so even your last cannons are going to be only wounding it on fives if you have something like haywire which can wound monolith just as a vehicle on four ups or five ups definitely use that instead of your last cannons because those will be very inefficient against it also just volume of attacks uh, going up to the four plus inverner will save but not higher in combat potentially is going to do the job well and you need to deal with the monolith because a few stratagems key stratagems are really tied to that and abilities monolith first of all can just pull units from the board or from reserves and dip strike them essentially within six inches of itself which they don't need to be within nine outside of nine sorry from your opponents from your units which means that they will gain a lot of mobility and they can create angles where there were none so beware of that and also for two command points if the monolith stayed on the board so you cannot do that if the monolith has teleported with the hypercrypt ability and just so we're clear hypercrypt ability is you being able to pull three units if you're playing 2000 points three units into strategic reserve from the board if they are not engaged so essentially like the Grey Knights the difference being Grey Knights all have dip strikes so they can then come back onto the board as a deep striking unit uh, these guys are going into strategic reserves with Necron so they can only come from the edge of the board unless they already had dip strike like Monolith has dip strike for example or the Transcendent Satan, I think he also has Dip Strike. So the Monolith can also, if it stayed on the board, allow that unit that he pulled from the board or from reserves and set up within six inches of itself, charge for two command points. Again, Monolith should have stayed on the board in that turn, so it cannot be a combo of teleporting Monolith and then putting units in front of the monolith six inches away that will not work however if the monolith just moves eight inches and then disembarks essentially disembarks that unit of for example score pack this can work and it's a very dangerous a very long potentially reaching charge another thing that monolith can do another another reason why you need to deal with it at some point again with assets that i mentioned like for example eradicators will not work that great against monolith because they will be bumping into its four plus invulnerable save and just not doing as much as necessary however the sword brethren charging the monolith with all those lethal hits and sustain hits and re-rolls potentially they will do a great job against monolith because it doesn't have damage modifiers so you will be putting those damage two wounds into it you don't even need to spend cp on extra ap because ap2 will be enough Another thing Monolith can do for Necrons is essentially teleport, emergency teleporting a unit away from shooting. So you, for example, staged your shooting in order to annihilate a unit of warriors. You start shooting at them, you kill a model, then they use 2 CP and teleport them away and to the monolith itself so giving them incredible mobility reactive to your shooting no real way to prevent that because it can happen even in the shoot in the fight phase sorry if you charge them and if they lost models so that's pretty much just going to happen unless you kill the monolith be sure you can destroy that unit with just one activation of your for example big terminator blob or something like that because if you don't kill them in one whole swoop they will just run away if they have two cp as you can see this detachment is very cp hungry so this is going to be a 
limiting factor for your opponent. So if they have, for example, the CP generation like the Imotech the Stormlord who gives them one CP in the command phase, try to find him, target him and destroy him because he's it's going to really make it harder for your opponent to jump around and do these weird things with their army. And lastly, beware of the Cetans and remember the quality volume of fire and combat is going to do the job very well against them. So you need to have reasonably good strength, so like strength 4 or 5, you need to be wounded on 5 with rerolls, so like Assault Intercessors, for example, with a lot of volume, which is going to bypass the half damage because you're damage one. It's going to bypass the invulnerable save from being swinging because when you're rolling a bunch of dice, it's going to be statistical. It's not like shooting three very, very good last cannon shots and then they pass two and then reroll one for a CP. Or use something like Ignore Modifiers, where you either ignore half damage completely or like Sword Brethren, where their plus one damage happens after the half damage happens. So essentially, you are bypassing that. And C-Tans are not as scary as one might think because they are very slow and even though they gain mobility in the hypercrypt, they only can still charge from 9 inches away. What you need to be aware of is, for example, like a 3 inch charge where the C-Tan will position themselves in the midst of your army somewhere where you cannot really deal with it, but then next turn he will be able to move out. That can be dangerous potentially, but your best defense against that is just staying away whenever possible from normal charges and destroy other Necron unions because Cetans by themselves will not be able to stop you. Next is the Canoptic Cord. Here is what I think about dealing with that and that's probably going to be the unit that you see in the tournaments. Hypercrypt is less popular. Lists that you will see from Canoptic Cord currently are going to be built around multiple units of Wraith, max size units, so it's going to be two or three units of six Wraith with a Technomancer. Technomancer gives them five plus feel no pain and also can heal model d3 so it's a very very durable unit they will also run canoptic doom stalkers as they have the canoptic keyword and the canoptic units and cryptic units in the canoptic court they gain real ones to hit and they gain full reals to hit when they are within their uh, matrix which matrix it means that you control either half of the objectives in the no man's land half of the objectives in your opponent's deployment zone or their deployment zone is always considered to be their matrix for canoptic doom stalkers for example that's extremely important because hitting on fours with full reels and hitting on fours just as is are very different things. We'll also run Ekanthrites, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, which are just annoying units that infiltrate and will be blocking you from engaging the Wraith in the first place, and units of Immortals with Plasmancers, which are going to be doing chip damage and just throwing efficient shooting at you. To deal with this stuff, the name of the game is damage control. You need to minimize your losses in the first turns from the Doomstalkers because they are the main shooting asset of those armies mostly. You need to kill those Doomstalkers with shooting and only do that when you have enough gun lined up on them. Otherwise, if you just shoot them and not kill them or kill one and it will leave one on a few wounds it's not gonna work you need to deal with hopefully two in the same turn stay safe from the third one focus your attention on one wraith unit at a time that is extremely important that's a rule for all necrons in general don't chip away at them because then you're just playing into their strength of reanimation for wraith it's even more important because it's a four wound model with five plus fill no pain so every wound, wound that they regenerate every wound that you do costs a lot every wound that you they regenerate is going to cost even more because as time goes on in the game you lose resources and every resource that you expand on them on killing them is going to cost you more in game terms and focus your attention on wraith units one at a time they're slow enough with a 10 inch move that it's possible when you have all of your assets lined up on one flank and you just move to that flank to engage that unit of wraith uh, then you will be pretty much safe from the other unit of wraith until the next turn so you will have a whole turn of safety essentially from that other unit's charge. So I will repeat that. Only focus on those wraith when you can kill them. Otherwise it is useless with all the reanimation and healing they can do. You probably will be focusing on the one that has the infiltrators enhancement first and it's going to be the enhancement that every list has because they want to have that early mobility. If you have a character with good melee, your friend is going to be the epic challenge because one CP and you can have precision on their melee and take out 
that five plus feel no pain on the technomancer there is a catch there though which is the one cp curse of the cryptic which means that until the end of the game that unit that killed that cryptic will be at plus one to hit and wound for the entire army so be careful and don't do that don't do precision with your most important unit hopefully you can use that unit elsewhere or just kill the unit of wraiths themselves and leave the technomancer alone until maybe next turn also remember wraith can reactively move six inches when you end the move within nine inches of them and that is a very powerful rule so your best case scenario if is baiting your opponent with those wraith where they can charge your unit and not kill it this will give you a chance to come closer to those wraith and then charge them shoot them without them being able to disengage and move six inches back why this uh, move back is so important is because they have also for one cp essentially a low knob rule so any canoptic unit can become a low knob so 12 inches away you cannot shoot them just for one cp that is crazy and keep that in mind when you're positioning so if you're trying to line up shooting for canoptic doomstalkers be within range and line of sight of at least two then you have at least one valid target the same goes for the wraith so they can move six inches back and then pop an extra cp so that you cannot shoot them that is worst case scenario it's going to help you is that their melee is not actually that dangerous unless they have the two cp for devastating wounds which is then it's going to be a big problem because they do have volume of attacks they do have damage too but they what they don't have is great strength or the rerolls to wound or they don't have the ap so if you have good armor Armor, you shall be able to shrug off most of the damage let me know what are your tricks for beating necrons i may have very well missed something that is important to know so let me know in the comment section below thank you for watching i'll see you next time